Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel and my show, Grub and Rub with King Tonto. I am super duper excited to be taking you on a journey of artful and deliciously beautifully plated meals while I hold awesome discussions with various girls from various walks of life and various parts of the world. Well, for those of you who do not know me, my name is King Tonto. I am King Tonto, the actress. I am King Tonto, the mom. I am the I said what I said king. Uh -huh. <laughs> I am a philanthropist. I am a lover of God and now a YouTuber. So for today's topic on Grub and Rob, we'll be talking about something really sensitive. I mean, it's so sensitive that I am physically upset. I'm spiritually upset. I'm, I'm everything upset. And that is rape. We're going to be talking on the high rates of rape in the country, the high rate of child abuse in our country, the high rate of gender-based violence in our country. And we'll be talking about this while we're feasting on all of this beautiful food. And believe you me, I would not be composed on this episode. I, I might cry on this episode. I, <laughs> I probably might just really not be stable, but bear with me because if you know nothing about rape, you would never understand the effect it can give to you on the long run. So I'm getting too emotional now. Before I get any further and break down, I will be calling on my guest. And my guest today is none other than Heye Oko. And she is the head photographer of the first lady, Aisha Buari. And she's also the CEO and a member of our community. Our is Sorry, our is an empowerment program that teaches women about self-defense, using creative outlets to express emotional as well as helping those who have been raped and molested have a voice. If you're doing anything, if you're walking around, if you're cooking, whatever you're doing, just drop it. This is a very sensitive topic. We all need to sit down, daddy call your children, mommy call your girls, call your boys, call everybody. We need to talk. So, join me and welcome my guest. So, welcome to Grub and Rob, Miss, Miss, or oh, Mrs. Miss. Miss <laughs> Haye Oko. I love your name. Where's it from? Delta State. Delta. Oh, the Delta they have lovely names then. <laughs> Thank you very much and welcome to Grab and Rob. We're excited to have you today. Fortunately, this is an eating show. We eat and we talk. But this episode, I think, might put me in an emotional mumbo jumbo. But my viewers know I eat my food, like I eat my food so well, but this is so we'll sensitive, but we will try, we will, we will try to, to put fun in this. <sighs> <laughs> so how are you doing? How's your day? Hi, my day's good. Oh, thank you. It was beautiful. I mean, my son is everywhere. Well, he means he's good. My birthday is in two days, so. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. So, Miss Aye, let me not take much of your time. Um, why, um, why our? And what is our? Okay. What was the motive behind our? Ours is an acronym for a woman with a story. Okay. Um, so, being in school and starting my career as a documentary photographer, I started to study people and realized that a lot of women are not necessarily creatively productive as much as they would want to be. And so I started, out of curiosity, I just started to ask questions like, what's going on? Why are you... I feel like there's a lot you're holding back. What's going on? And you know, for those who are bold enough, they tell you, oh, maybe I was raped or I was molested at some point in my life and I've not been able to move on from mm. that experience. So I'm like, so that's what's holding you back. Um, you can't change the past. You can't, and nobody's forcing you to tell your story. I don't go about telling people you have to tell your story and all of that. But um, I, I realized that creativity was therapy for me. And through writing, through um, photography, I was able to express myself. So I decided, okay, what if we train women based on their interest to express themselves creatively? That way they can tell stories that help them heal 
and they inspire other people and help other people heal, as opposed to um, holding back from themselves because of these experiences um, and they're not being productive in the long run. So those experiences now are pushed to the back of your memory and it doesn't now determine how they make decisions in the future. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, you know, I, I do own a foundation, okay. okay? So I do understand part of this question I'm going to be asking you. Mm -hmm. You know, getting to hear rape stories from different rape victims mm -hmm. consistently, it can affect your mind. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> I, I, I know I'm going to be so emotional. <sighs> I think my question is, you you get to hear a lot of or so many stories, stories that we can we we're not even privileged to hear. Okay, how, what's the effect like? How how do you sleep at night? How do you help these people? I I've never told my story before. Okay, I I definitely I I. <laughs> yes, I, I am a rape victim, but I never let it define me. I never let it get to me. But, you know, just the fact that so many of these things are just happening every day and it's, it seems to be like it's growing. I hear rape culture now. When we're supposed to be having love culture, dance culture, you know, creative culture. There's something called rape culture now. So, how do you manage it? Because <laughs> um, I've never told anybody my story and I've never really been able to absorb anybody's story because it's just, it's, it's, so much. it's too much, yeah. really. Yeah. Yes. Um, so um, because, of, because of what we do, we are exposed to a lot of these details. We are exposed to a lot of people. I tell people all the time that whether one was raped or one was molested or whatever you want to call it, the physical effect or damage is different, but the emotional damage is the same. Um, so it's the same thing we, we do for people who participate in our initiative. If you are able to remove the attention from yourself and focus on other people, help them heal, tell their stories, it makes you feel better. In the long run, you now start to heal. So the fact that there are if I can call them testimonies, people who have gone through the program, people who, whose hearts have been uplifted, people who have become better as a result of, of them being able to express themselves through these creative platforms. That is what now gives us joy. Because the first time, we started in 2017, and um, it, was, it was sort of experimental for us. We started with 10 people, oh. and we taught them photography, documentary photography. It was mixed with counseling, therapy, and other activities and all of that. And we realized that people who were so timid, people who were so quiet and everything, after six weeks, they are all busy and all. So I'm like, look at what, look at all you have inside of you. So at first, I get very emotional and I can't sleep, to be very honest mm. with you, because I put myself in, in people's shoes, just trying to understand what people have been through and all of that. And just memories, even just hearing the stories sometimes, it's it's very hard. It's, it's breaking. It's so it takes me some time but just seeing the people who come out of it people who come and say thank you so much for this and i, I mean it's not it's not for the thank yous it's not but at the same time people are healing mm. so that's that's comforting yeah. for us oh wow that's amazing that's amazing i i understand that you actually rehabilitate these women through creativity yeah. could you share some of these creative things that you do with them something that could help someone. Maybe it could help me too, you, you know. I, I know I'm totally, I, I can't say I'm totally healed, but I'm such a strong person that I, I had to push it backwards and just never let it. In fact, if we never had all this topic, I'd never said it anywhere. I probably would never have remembered it. I don't remember it. You know, I try as much as possible to block it. Out, and I know that it has had a psychological effect on me trying to push it and not trying to deal with it. Okay, but... I'll get there. We'll all get there. I think it's, we have a lifetime to deal with all these things. <laughs> um, so it's what I tell people, especially for those who, who I get to interact with, don't block it out. 
Mm. So I'm not one of the people to tell you, oh, let it go, or it is well, or just block it out. Don't. Because one day it will come back. And then what do you, what do, you do? You have to live through it. It's, yeah. it's, it's the same thing with how people tell you to face your fears. Face it, conquer, and then move on. Mm. It's, it's easier said than done. Yeah. But eventually, you're able to. Um, so we've, we've highlighted four different platforms that we use at ours for creative platforms. Creative writing, creative arts, documentary photography, and illustrative dance. So whoever you are, however you are, somehow you would fall into one of, of these. So even if you don't know how to use the, the platform, that's where we come in and we teach you how to do it. So in that whole time, we're not necessarily talking about you. So for the period of time that we have these trainings or we have these workshops, you are thinking about this art and you are you're finding ways to express yourself through it. The attention goes away from you okay. in that moment. Mm. So you are like distracting exactly. yourself. So you are, you are happy doing what you're doing. You're interacting with other people. You are hearing other people's stories. Mm. You are doing something creative. So there are colors. There's, there's light. There's all of that. Even if I know that there are people who put so much darkness into their work, but um, it's, it's creative. It's expressive. So in that period, you're able to see things in a different light. Okay. Yeah. So that's okay. So do you have like um, like a uh, like an office or like a therapy a ter therapeutic room for this where people can come in? Is it where is it? Is it here? Is it outside the states? No. Uh, so it's actually online. It's virtual. So oh wow. Virtual safe space. So okay. People prefer to stay anonymous mm -hmm. because um, especially because of the society we live in people are not yet open to True, sharing yeah. their stories so we some of them we don't even know ourselves for their safety safety yeah yeah so we can be held accountable we have um, guidelines that keep us in check so we are not releasing anybody's information without their consent or anything like that but it's an online safe space Oh, wow, that's amazing. I mean, it's it's good that you're not even physically doing it. You can do it from anywhere, any part of the world. So there's nothing restricting you from getting healing. And there's no shame in help asking for help. I mean, some people are strong enough to do this on their own, and some people are not. The truth is damaged people damage people. If you grow up damaged, you damage people. I, I do know that while growing up, I, I had a lot of psychological breakdowns, and I could associate it with that thing. But I just was still trying to push it away mm -hmm. and because i'm a very strong spirit and high spirit i had to put me first i had to say no i matter i'm important mm -hmm. this man was not going to take the bigger part of my life yeah, anymore exactly. you took one minute or it took two minutes of my life and you've damaged it for for this period of time mm -hmm. and it's enough it's enough i'm not going to let you do no more damage to me and that's how i said to myself and i moved on and yes i did get my apology but then the damage has been done just you say that's it's it's it might be two minutes of pleasure mm -hmm. for you or five minutes of pleasure for you, but it's a lifetime of damage for your victim. And that's why I I really believe that our society needs to put more values and more energy, more um light into training our male child. I see that we grew up in a community where the female child is being groomed mm -hmm. for marriage, for being a good wife, yeah. for being a good girl, for mm -hmm. being a good dad. But I don't see where the male child is being groomed for even being a good child, mm -hmm. you know? So they just grow up and they just do anything. And some of them don't even have the, some of them don't even have like an irritation of family, of love, of togetherness, of so many things. That, like I said, broken people, damaged people would always damage people. They probably had been raped before in their in their past in the past. They probably have been abused before in their past, but still that does not give you the right to rape other people. But then that's the only life they have known. So we I think our society should put more into punishment the punishment of these perp perpetrators. Yeah. The, because if you intense the punishment, they will realize the mistake even before they, uh, they commit the offense. Yeah. And also, they should actually put more in training our, our boys. boys. Also, I think it is good that we have a list of sex offenders in every state because I have a child, I have a son, and I want to be able to know that my neighbor is okay, that my, I can leave my son for two minutes in my home and just stay out. And even if my son is playing outside of his garden, he will be safe with a neighbor or with this person or with that person. So I think our society has a lot, a lot in helping the girl child. And I think our society has not been helping the girl child enough. 
I think so. I really, really, really think so. And I think it's high time that we need to stop and we need to put so much attention. There's so many rallies around the world and it's say enough is enough. My body is my own. My no is my no. Even if I'm in the middle and I say, I stop, you should stop because that's a stop. So I, I, I don't, it's... Oh, God. It's very upsetting, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, um, it we is. Have, we have, and it's not helping that we have rape apologists all over the place, you know, giving excuses for, for them. What shouldn't be excused. Um, but it's it's where we've seen ourselves. But what, what, and there are so many activists all over the place and everything, and let us say that violence ends now. One day. Yeah. But what happens to the minds of or the victims? people? What happens to the minds of the people who have been damaged by these atrocities? What happens to them? Because they are the ones who have survived it. So we have fought, we have gone on our protests, we have put laws in, in place and all of that to stop victimization. But what happens to people who have been victimized? And so that's why we started ours. So that even after everything has been done we make sure that people are okay yeah yeah because at the end of the day they the the, the psychological um, trauma or the psychological healing of the victim is the yeah. is the goal of our okay. right so okay i know that Hawa has actually or is actually taking self defense classes and i think that's very important that every woman should actually have a self defense class or should be able to know how to defend herself I'm, i don't know for you guys i'm still, i look like i'm i'm nothing but really I, I i from now nobody can mess with me like seriously unless you probably will be like 100 mm -hmm. because i'm really prepared i i have my my mind is prepared my spirit is prepared my my strength my whole body is prepared so i think that the next step for me is to take a self-defense class which i've never taken before but i think it will just help our girls be more confident okay yeah. what, what do you think yeah i i totally agree i started self-defense myself three years ago and it was because for some weird reason i, I just started to feel unsafe i had to be late i had to be out late at night a lot and i'm like what if what if what if something happens on the street how do i protect myself um and all I, you hear a lot of stories of people being kidnapped cars being stolen people being mugged on the streets and you know so in that period of time i felt like it was time for me to start learning something whatever yeah, it was yes. so I made my, my inquiries and i started but with ours i realized that for many victims if at that point in time they could strangle someone or hit someone at a particular spot on their body or something they could have defended themselves yes and these are very simple things basic techniques that would not take you more than an hour yeah. to learn so we start we inculcated that into our program as well so once or twice a year we hold self-defense classes for our participants are these classes online too yeah, yeah, yeah. not only the physical, the physical. Oh, okay because i i have um um gotten messages in my dm mm -hmm. when someone says that um is this a particular girl that actually sh she's so beaten up by this rape she was raped by her uncle mm -hmm. and she's so beaten up by it because she she just feels helpless she's she, her 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 pain or her weakness is the fact that she's not able to even do anything. anything. She feels so helpless. She feels like so worthless that she can't even save herself. So how can someone save her? So I think that the self-defense class will give you a little bit of confidence. Will also give you a little bit of, no matter what happens, where I, I did my best. Mm -hmm. I tried, I tried to save myself. It would, it would protect you and yeah, sense of security, even though nobody should actually feel insecure in your country, in your home. Because right now they're not just killing us on the streets mm -hmm. they went into a house of god they went into, homes, they went into a house a church, of god a church yeah. so if they can come into a church I, I mean what what else i mean i also heard there's a pregnant woman in benin that was raped and killed in her home so that, that's her home her privacy so we're not safe anymore women we're not safe anymore and the government is not doing enough and even if they're doing it even if they're doing, they're not doing enough to be able to protect us. So you have to take that stand for yourself and say enough is enough. I'm going to treat myself better. I'm going to take myself to a self-defense class. I'm going to learn. I'm going to go all. I'm going to register and in our classes. And I'm going to be able to build my mind. I'm going to build my spirit. I'm going to be okay again. I'm going to do this. Because if you keep being down, they are winning again and again and again. And that's something that 
I would hate to see that someone who hurt me is winning. Never. That's, that is the last thing I would ever want to do in my life. So what you should do is look for better ways for you to be okay. You can talk to someone. You, like, like she said, you don't have to to tell your names. If I've never told my story before, I'll probably look for someone who I want to trust and not give my name and tell the story to the person and probably get help. We all need help. We do need help because there's there's no help coming from anywhere. It is we against the world and we need to realize that and we need to pick up the speed and we need to do something for our culture because the female race is a culture and without that female race there is no culture ever again in this life so you need to protect yourself so start thinking about a self-defense class to attend or you can contact how do they contact you please tell them so we're on instagram um our handle is i am awas a i a m a w w a s i am awas okay so um we're talking about how the government is not doing enough or even if they're doing or they're not doing anything at all uh, we're not sure mm -hmm. But um, if you were to suggest, what, what ways do you think that the government can come in and curb this rape culture? <sighs> so the first thing I think is reception. In the first place, if something happens and you report it, we need to know that we will be received. We need to know that we will be responded to. But if I'm scared that the first thing I'm going to hear is how can I verify this? It's 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 even scarier to know that oh. I'm not going to be believed when I say my story. I'd rather not. You know, so the first thing I think is to maybe sensitize the police force. Okay. Sensitize um yeah safety agencies, protective agencies, so that they are receptive to people who report abuse, who report um, victimization. Because I, I, um, I was watching a clip on, um, on social media and I, I saw uh, a clip where Uwa, the, the late girl, mm -hmm. may, may have so rest in perfect peace, mm -hmm. where her sister was crying and saying that the police asked her to bring mobility fee. Mm -hmm. I went to report to you that my, my, my sister, my child has been beaten brutally molested, rape, and you ask me for mobility fee. These are the things that I think that you're talking about they need to be sensitized about. And again, we, we also need to actually sensitize them on what rape is, because half of Nigerian men don't even believe that it's rape. I say, oh, it's a man and woman thing, it's not a rape. No, it, it is, it, 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 it exists. I think that sensitizing them that there is rape, knowing the iniquities of rape, no, and even, like I said, even if you're halfway into sex and she says no, no, no is no. no. Yeah, so all of these things, the police should be able to understand it because if I took my case to the police and I say, okay, we were having sex and at the, at the middle of sex, I said no, I didn't want to do it again. I'm sure they look at me like I'm crazy. Of course. I'm sure yeah. even the even the, the women who are being raped and they say oh because she dressed indecently they look at them as crazy yeah. now let me ask a, a question if I am young and I'm dressing indecently how about the 78 year old woman that was raped how about the two month old baby that was raped mm -hmm. how about the 10 year old girl that was raped so if I am the fully. yes or how about the Muslim our Muslim sisters the born again the ones that actually cover their heads from the, how about those ones that are seriously not even showing any part of their body but they are still being raped so stop telling us that our dressing causes you to rape us rather you should work on yourself because you're an animal and you do not you do not have a right to exist you don't have a right to exist. It is so upsetting. There's no excuse. It's no excuse. There's no excuse. There was no, there was no excuse. I was following a case for Chloe. Um, I, I think I was in, I was in um, Israel and, and I got a call from her mother or her auntie or something. Somebody, a six-year-old girl that was raped. She was raped four years ago. And the father of the girl was the person who was paying the courts and the, um, what do they call it, the... Um, um lawyer lawyer bills so you rate my daughter and i'm paying your lawyer bills so you can be set free 
There's so many messed up things happening in our community. There is so I've many things. Them. Our fathers are raping their children. Oh, yeah. Our pastors are raping their, their, their church members. Our uncles are raping their nieces, uncle, brothers and sisters are raping each other. Like it is, it is a crazy, crazy thing. And it's something that we should never, I, I'm a mother, and that is why most of all these things are really very um, personal. personal to me. And because I would hate to see that mm. my son goes through something like this. Yeah. At, 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 a, at a point, there was a time when my son would, would come into the house. I would, I would physically, like, you know, just take him away mm. and just go and, you know, check him. And just to know if anything, yeah, like, you, you, you can imagine, I, I was doing that, like, on a regular basis because I did not know. I didn't, I didn't know who could do anything. I didn't know who, who, who could hurt him. I didn't know. You know, I was doing that. And as a mother, it's scary. It's scary that I have to think that my child must, will be molested. It is so, it is just so, it is just so scary. It is just so scary. I, I can't, I, I can't. It is, I, I, I can't. I just, I just want, I just want the world to be better for the next generation. I have a son. I have a child. I, I I just want it to be better for them more than it was for me. Yeah, you know, do our best to protect the ones that we love, protect ourselves, protect our children. <sighs> we have to take matters into our hands at this point, which is why even children should be taught self-defense. If any uncle or auntie tries to touch you in a funny way, you teach them yeah. what to do. You teach them what to say. You help their minds. You help. You help their reflexes. Yeah. Don't go there. Don't touch me here. Don't say this to me. Don't you know? So, we have a lot of work to do. We for do. Ourselves. We, we really do. We we really do. Yeah. We really do. And boys and girls. Yes, yes. And yeah, that's the thing. Boys also get raped too. Let's not forget that. Yeah. You know, it's it's more shameful for them to come out and say I've been raped. I had a best friend who was raped, and all he says is that I was raped and. That's how I learned how to have sex. But he knew that he was wrong. He knew, but he's like, I'm a dude. What am I going to say? How am I going to say it? I mean, come on. That's such an old woman, me. I was enjoying, you know, but he was being molested. And uh, also, there's, there, there, I think there, there are certain children that actually go to their parents and say, I'm, I was raped. And they get beaten. Yeah. They get... They, they get cast. I, that, saw, like, I, I saw a video today of a woman that was beating her child her and saying that the child was going to the person Can who was imagine? Oh like, yeah, I saw that video. I saw that video. I saw that video. <laughs> but that brings me to another point where in Africa here we need to, we need to understand that mental health issue mm -hmm. is a big thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think she was she was physically she was okay. okay. Uh, no matter how she talked, mm -hmm. I, I I I can see through mental illness yeah. because I mean I've been around it. I can see through it. Even there's a woman that killed her baby and she was she was so happy. She like I had to kill him. In fact, it was so happy. I mean I killed her. She was oh, sitting down like oh. casually like it's it's on the social media and saying how she killed her. Now in fact that she she knows that her life will be better and she goes to jail. That it's not jail. She knows that what will happen to her is in jail. But what will happen to she and that girl outside? You know? Mm -hmm. So parents, you need to put in so much effort in believing and actually listening to your children. I don't, yes. I don't, I can't, I can't believe that a small child will come and tell me that, oh, um, mommy, um, uncle put hand inside here and I will say, oh, ta, go away. First of all, how do you even think that that little girl conceived that yeah, kind of thing lie. and put it together and you think that her brain would be yeah. mature enough yeah. to say that? I think we should put, parents, we also have a lot of work to do. We also have a lot Listen of work to, to do. Children. Listen to your children. Please. Yes. Listen to your children. Yes, please. Children, I don't, I don't know. Children are innocent. I know that there are crazy stories out there of um, children who have been exposed to all sorts of things. But an innocent child will not lie to you about no. something that's no. happened to them. They will tell you what they've seen. Mm -mm. They are very honest in whatever they do and whatever they, they, they say. So just listen to them. Pay attention to habits, pay yeah. attention to patterns. If a pattern changes in a child, child. you know that there's something wrong. Yeah. Um, if, if you're not open with your children, they can't tell you the truth. truth. They can't tell you when something has gone wrong. Mm -hmm. They can't tell you when something has changed. They can't tell you when something feels weird. So be open with them, be vulnerable with them so that they will be vulnerable with you as well, no matter how young or even old this child is. Because some of the participants we have at ours 
will tell you how they told their parents. But their parents, the first thing they did was to not believe them. them. Yeah. They were either beaten or some sent out of the house, disowned even, uh, maybe because they got pregnant and everything. We have one who got pregnant and because her parents just disdained her, wouldn't talk to her and all of that, she went and got rid of the child and then... There was even more punishment for committing an abortion and all of that. She was just she was castigated. It wasn't it wasn't funny. But then there's this victim whose mind is all messed up and you can't do anything about it at the time because she's still under her parents' mm, protection. protection. Yeah, so to so speak. Listen to your children. <laughs> mm. Okay. Um no, um do you think not do you think, you know how we get to shame people body shaming shaming you when you tell your stories do you think that the public ridicule is one of the things that people are not able to voice it out yeah you think so that's the reason there's a lot of we we stigmatize a lot a lot yeah i know we stigmatize a lot go on social media just read comments and there are a lot of people who say you would ask what was she wearing mm. What did she go to do? There? In 2020, though. In 2020. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen that comment. Yeah. I, I saw it two wearing? days ago. What, what did she go there to do? Dress well. Dress better. What did she go there to do? Okay, mm. she did not go and sleep there. Mm -hmm. What did she expect? Mm. What did she and expect? Like, Excuse me. We've, we've looked at these statistics and we've seen people who... Most of the people who have been raped, especially in Africa, in Nigeria, were raped by people that they trust. Yeah, people that we people that know. They know. Uncles, fathers, boyfriends, you know. Um, so the first thing, because you know that the first question someone will ask you would be one that questions your trust in the person who abused you. Yeah. So you, you don't want to have to answer that question. Okay, what did I go to do in do this house? What was I wearing? Mm. I don't know that you expect me to wear about that to go to my boyfriend's house. I, I don't know, you know. So I don't know if we can ever conquer stigma. But there's one thing I tell participants all the time, friends, whoever, I tell them, there's almost nothing you can use to blackmail me. Mm. I'll drop it there for you. That's <laughs> I'll drop it there for you. Just That's me. <laughs> Team Shameless. I will say it out before you, you even try to even want to. You can't. Yeah, like, like I'll just leave it there no. for you. Okay, see it now. I'm such a strong personality that if I have a story to tell and I'm determined to tell that story, no amount of is a lie uh, you are saying, uh, you, are, you are just listening, mm -hmm. no amount of insults from bullies or anything can stop me. My story must be heard and be told. Mm -hmm. If I tell it in this way, you're not heard, I'll tell it from yeah, there. I'm very stubborn. You cannot keep me down. And that is the, the attitude I feel like women of this day should have. Mm -hmm. Not stubborn. Don't be stubborn as in stubborn, but yeah. be stubborn with what you want. Be stubborn with you, your you goals. Yes, thank you. So you can, I, I, I told them in, I think it was hours 2018, and I told them, I said, you have to get to the point where it's your guts that drives, that, that mm, drives you. Mm, you can't mm. be governed by your emotions, emotions all, at all the time. We are very emotional. Mm. I am very emotional. I am too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm chaka boom and emotional. Nobody, nobody's going to give it to you on a platter of gold. You, mm. have to, you have to take it yourself. It's your identity. It's the rest of your life. Yeah. So if you allow it hold you down, you won't, you won't make progress. And you can be quiet, you can be shy and reserved and all of that. But you can own your story. This this wasn't even a line by me. It was by one of our participants who was telling everyone else, own your story. Mm. If you take hold of what happened to, to you, I say, yes, it happened to me. Nobody can now use it against you because you've you've mm. you've um, you've accepted, accepted it, it. Yeah, and you've. You've so told you, yeah. So who, 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 some people are not gonna believe you. Some yeah. people are gonna be, but that's, that's not fine. your problem. Just tell your story and move on so you can heal. Because while telling, I've, I realized that while telling your story, you heal. I, I, something happened four years ago in my life and I kept telling my story over and over. People thought I was mad, but it was a healing process for me. I needed to tell that story to make sure that I knew that it happened to me. And make sure that I knew that I was a victim of that circumstance. I made sure I knew that nobody said, oh, keep quiet, and I kept quiet. Mm -hmm. I made... The world turned me upside down like that. But I, I picked them up again. I turned all of them like this again. I kept telling my story. I kept telling. I kept telling my story until they saw everything in it. You know. So I feel like um, yes. I, I do understand that not everybody will be as strong as I am. Yeah. But the truth is, you are all you've got. Once you realize that you, nobody really has you, nobody really got you. You are all you you have. Mm -hmm. 
you would be able to have a sense of self-love and self-love can come in radical forms. It can come in, like I said, it can be peaceful, it can be radical. You don't have to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can actually just be a strong-minded person. So just And that's that other woman, she's just a strong-spirited person. She's just, a, oh, she stands by her ground, you know? She's not a weak woman. You know, we need to, we, women, we need to work our, on ourselves mm -hmm. with self-love because when things like this happen to us, we feel so dirty, we feel so unloved. Mm -hmm. We feel so, like, th there's, a, there's a lady I was talking to, her only mental, a, be, a problem with her rape case was the fact that she was a high class woman, woman and she was raped by truck pushers, hoodlums. So you can imagine the class degrading. Mm -hmm. So hers own was like people that would never even come close to me. This like same set of people that mm -hmm. I have grown out of to out of that situation to live a better life. Mm -hmm. These are the same people that came to do this thing to me. So it was like they took her back to their level mm -hmm. and she has been on their level for 11 years 11 good years self-love is very important it's very important very, very yeah important. it's very important to be honest it takes some time for people to get out of that that darkness to the point where they are able to love themselves but sometimes it takes time sometimes it takes pep talks sometimes it takes having to draw yourself out for some time but eventually when that time comes, pour all the love you can into, into yourself. yourself. Yes. Whatever it is that you love doing, whatever it is that you love to 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 spend time doing. Like if it's music you love, listen to a lot of it. If it's conversation you like, find people to talk to. One of our counselors says that you can literally just stop someone in the middle of the street and just tell them what happened to so this person does not owe you, you don't owe the mm. person, you don't know the person, the person doesn't know you and you walk away. Obviously you leave the person confused but you've let out something and you can walk away so fill fill up your time with things that you enjoy nobody's going to judge you for doing things that you love to do legally mm -hmm. but just fill your time with things that you enjoy doing and one other thing that we encourage is that you find a support system because could you talk to the camera while saying this because sure. they need to understand they need to know she's trying to advise p victims out there just please pay attention and get find, something find from it. Find a support system. If it's in church, if it's a group of, of people who have common, you have things in common with, if it's um, friends that you know you can get solid encouragement from, don't stay away from people for too long. Obviously, you can, you can stay in solitude yeah. sometimes, you know, just to spend time with yourself and to, to, um, to build yourself emotionally. But don't stay too far from people. Because at the end of the day, you you need to to get encouragement. You need to to see what smiles look like on other people's faces. You know, so find a support system. People who can either pray with you or just have conversation or go watch a movie with people. You know, just don't stay away from people for too long. Because, um, you know, they say an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Mm. You don't want to stay that idle for too long. Not having people to talk to. Not having good conversation people will help you i know that there are a lot of people who say they've gone to certain people and they've given them the wrong advice they've they've caused them more harm than good i get that but at the same time not you can't tell me that everyone in your life is is bad or everyone in your life will give you wrong advice there are people who genuinely love you a mother gave birth to you you have a father you have brothers and sisters cousins anyone who you know you can talk to. Don't stay far away from people. Don't isolate yourself and drive people away because these are people who want to love you and all. It's not It's not all toxic. Yeah. It's not all toxic. Mm. I'm just here to tell you that we love you and you can heal. Yeah. You can heal. You can be better. You can do better things. You can heal and you can also help people just like her. You can help people just like me. I work with um, NAPTIP. I'm actually an ambassador for NAPTIP. So, okay. so this is actually one of the things that we do, mm -hmm. catch and as um, um, catch perpetrators and actually um, jail them or give them whatever okay. it is. And so you can actually write her, you can write me. I, I have my foundation um, email everywhere. I mean, it's everywhere in the internet and you can I'll probably take her information and actually put there because it's very important. It is super, super important that we all participate in this. Thank you very much for watching Grub and Rob with King Tonto. I'm so sorry that this episode got really emotional, but it's about to get even more emotional as we take one or 30 seconds and just in silence for all the life lost from rape. But male, 
both female, all the lives. We are sorry we couldn't help you. We are sorry we couldn't be there. We are sorry you couldn't fight harder. We are sorry. We are sorry. We are sorry. And as long as we live, we will fight for you. We will be your voice. We are sorry. 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 I'd like to send out a big shout out to Ifan. Um, he recently came out and um, told the world that he was raped. Him, Ifan is um, a movie producer. He is a boy. Yes, boys can be raped. Um, Ifan, shout out to you. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for talking. Um, people, let's be good to one another. Let's listen to people. Let's help them heal. You never know what anybody is facing. I love you so much. I'm so distracted. I can't even end this, but I do. Love you all, and thank you so much. Miss oh. Howard, thank you so much for coming to Grab and Robbie Kingdom. We are super excited. This is amazing. I will be joining your club. I will tell my story. I want to heal. I know I'm strong, but I still want to hear so much more. I still want to be able to t be told that it was not my fault, yeah. you know, and be hugged. Just you know, just that thing, you know. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. So thank, thank you. you. We just have a little gift for you. I hope you appreciate it. Thank, thank, you. You. So thank you. I know we didn't eat our food and I'm so <laughs> I'm not happy about not eating my food, but yes, it was too sensitive to indulge in pleasure. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. And we believe in you. We love you. Like I said, tell your story and heal. <laughs> <laughs>